Well, today's Dunkley by-election is being seen as a real-world test of what the electorate thinks of how the Albanese government is going. Joining me is Liberal MP and Shadow Minister for Government Services, Paul Fletcher. Paul, good morning. Thanks good morning. for coming into uh, the studio this early in the morning. But uh, what are your thoughts on Dunkley? Well, we've got a very strong candidate in Nathan Conroy. He's a community leader. He's been a mayor for about three years, mayor of Frankston. Came to Australia from Ireland at the age of 19 and he and his wife and young child making a life here in Australia. Uh, look, this is a chance to send a message to Anthony Albanese that uh, people want him to be more serious about dealing with the cost of living challenges that Australians are facing. Uh, we've run a good campaign. Uh, it's always be hard to win. It's always challenging in a by-election when a, a sitting member has died. There's naturally sympathy there and the last 10 times uh, there's been a by-election for that reason there hasn't been a change but nevertheless we run a, a good campaign it'll be a matter for the people of Dunkley. Yeah of course our thoughts and prayers are still with the family. Uh, tragic story last year of course. Um, now a wrap-up of the Parliament week as we change pace uh, we say goodbye to Scott Morrison uh, you worked with him how will history remember him? I think uh, Scott Morrison has left a very substantial legacy from uh, around four years as Prime Minister. Of course, he delivered uh, AUKUS, um, a very significant national security uh, initiative. And, of course, he led Australia through the pandemic, the most challenging times for our country since World War II. Uh, the economic outcomes amongst the best in the world, but it, even more importantly, the public health outcomes amongst uh, the best in the world. And, of course, uh, earlier in his political career, he was the minister who stopped the boats. A uh, strong immigration minister keeping Australians safe. A uh, bit of a contrast with the current immigration minister, Andrew Giles, who rightly has been under pressure in Parliament this week. He led 149 people, hardened criminals, out of immigration detention, murderers, rapists and others. And people have seen him floundering around in question time this week and earlier this year. You don't look at that bloke and think, well, he's keeping us safe. It wasn't always bells and whistles for Scott Morrison. He did give himself a few jobs... Um, his, his tenure as Prime Minister tarnished by the back end of uh, that job and that election? Uh, look, um, Mr Albanese uh, made that a, a big attack point last year. Uh, it made very little practical difference, I might say. The reality is that uh, Prime Ministers are the ones... Uh, you know, Prime Minister is in charge and no, signi no significant decision is taken without a Minister consulting with the Prime Minister or the... Prime Minister's office, but at the end of the day, um, those short-term political talking points will be forgotten uh, before too long. What people will remember is the significant structural measures that Scott Morrison, as Prime Minister and before that as Treasurer and indeed as Minister for Immigration and, uh, and Minister for Social Services, was able to deliver. Meta's decision to abandon the news media bargaining code. Now, you were instrumental in establishing the code when you were Communications Minister in that former government. Um, this is a huge move. Now, a lot of people looking at it and think, oh, you're just hitting the, the big media organisations. Well, it's not. It's, it's attacking the heart of, of some very, very small Australian operators. Look, we did have a big focus on this issue. Uh, as Communications Minister, I worked closely with then Prime Minister Scott Morrison, then Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, and the whole point was that we had Google and Facebook... Uh, using content generated by Australian news media businesses, big and small, as you rightly say, using that very successfully to attract eyeballs to their sites, uh, earning a lot of advertising revenue and not paying for it. Well, uh, we believed, and the advice from the ACCC was, that was wrong and was a breach of their market power or a misuse of their market power. And on that basis, we legislated the news media bargaining code. Now, what we've seen from Facebook or Meta yesterday is not uh, dissimilar to the way this country, uh, this company often behaves. Of course, in February 2021, they shut down... What the, should we do? ..the what, Facebook what? pages of a lot of uh, news media companies. Yeah, well, absolutely. Well, there's mean? a lot of powers in that Act. There's a lot of powers in the News Media Bargaining Code and the legislation mm. which embodies it, including the Treasurer has the power to designate Meta, the parent company of Facebook. Once that happens, a news media company can apply to have an arbitration process commence and a compulsory arbitration can occur and that can have the force of law. Mm. So, look, the Morrison government stood up to the uh, big global digital platforms, including Meta, owner of Facebook, uh, successfully. Some $200 million uh, mm. will be paid to Australian news media businesses 
by the two big platforms under deals that were struck under the code. The F Morrison government successfully stood up to Meta. Now it's up to the Albanese government to do the same.